Hey everybody. Today we're talking a little bit about if-else statements in R. This is a core computer science idea that you're sure to need as you go on in your R journey. I'm going to do a few basic examples so we can get a feel for the logic and see how these are actually coded in R. I'm going to show you a handy shortcut that um, I found very useful in my own work. And then finally I'm going to do a practical example, something that I ran across um, just last week. So uh, to start, I've coded in a very simple character vector, my word. It's uh, one word long. It's hello. Um, it's a character vector of length one, and it's just the word hello. And what I'd like to do is to have R tell me whether or not this is a short string or a long string. So I'm going to do an if statement. And to do an if statement, you start with the word if, and then a space. And then in parentheses, you need to write something that's going to evaluate to either true or false. And if it evaluates to true, R is going to do the thing that comes next. And if it evaluates to false, R will not do the thing that comes next. So let's do n char of my word, my word. <laughs> and uh, if that's less than or equal to 5, I'm going to print. Uh, how about it's a short string. OK, so uh, notice I did the brace and then started a new line with an indent. RStudio did the indent for me. And then a new line with a closed brace. And that's the, the typical polite way of writing your if statements. Um, if you have a much shorter if statement or a very short if statement, you can put everything on one line. I'll do an example like that in a little bit. But I think in general, this kind of indenting is helpful for clarity and for um, correctness. You'll find yourself making fewer mistakes if you're consistent in your writing. OK, so uh, we expect this to actually print. It's a short string because my word only has five characters in it. There we go. It did. Let's, uh, let's make that statement false by changing my word to have six characters. Hello with an exclamation point. Now we didn't print anything. Um, you can see the printout from the previous one was here. What we're seeing here is just the actual statement that's being sent to R. Uh, so if this evaluates as false, as it did in this case, the inside of this brace isn't actually happening. So R won't even detect if there's a syntax error, as you can see here. Uh, also, by the way, incidentally, the word print isn't, strictly speaking, necessary here. We know R auto prints when you just give it um, a vector of any sort and hit enter. OK, um, however, sometimes, actually, let me put the word print back in there for clarity. Sometimes, however, when the statement evaluates to false, as in this case, you don't just want R to do nothing. You want it to actually do something. So in this case, I'd like to print, it's a long string. So uh, we can do that with the word else. And then the syntax after, that's exactly the same. You put a brace, and now you say what happens if this evaluates to false. And in this case, I'd like to print, it's a long string. All right, and we still got hello, which is a long string. There we go. Now, you can chain these together. For instance, um, set, you know, this isn't that long. It's only six characters. So let's do else if, and then put another one in here. Uh, so now we've got to put actually another control sequence, another um, uh, true false thing in here. So how about if uh, it's less than or equal to, I don't know, eight? Let's put it's a mid length string. And then finally, we can just, uh, sorry, print it's a long string. All right, so as soon as R gets one to one of these, it evaluates as true. It's going to do the thing and then stop and ignore everything that comes out after. So in this case, we should get it's a mid length string. So this last statement is ignored, that last else statement. This first one is ignored because this um, if part, this logical here, evaluates to false. So finally, we can see what happens if we have a long string like hello there. And this time we should get hits a long string, just as you'd expect. OK, so uh, a lot of times you might want to use if else statements for evaluation. So for instance, we can set x to 4. And then we can let y be um, determined by an if statement. So how about uh, if x is less than 4, 
then we can evaluate this to zero. So just basically round it down to zero. So how about we do less than five? There we go. All right. So in my environment now, you should be able to see that y got set to zero. This is a really simple one, so I'm gonna put in an else statement. Let's say uh, y should now be 10. All right, so now if x, for instance, is six, y evaluates to 10 in this case. So here what I've done is to um, ignore the brace here. It's such a short statement, I've decided the braces weren't really necessary here. Okay, that's not actually the shortcut, of course. This is supposed to be the more verbose version that we um, would like to kind of avoid. So if you don't need to chain long strings of if-elses, if you just have a single if and a single else, you can use the short command if-else. And uh, you know what? Maybe I'll pull up the help file on that so you can see it. All right, so first you have that logical, that's the thing that goes in the parentheses here. And then you have to tell R what it should return if the logical is true and what it should return if the logical is false. So this is great if you just wanna return values, basically, you're not trying to do um, long chains of statements or print anything, for instance. Uh, so this thing I have in line 18 can get recoded as x less than five, and if that's true, it's zero. And if it's false, it's 10. And I'll just print y here. And you can see that I got 10 in this case, where x is six. And if I make x four, then this if else statement gives me zero. All right, let's do an actual example. I have this data set called plant updates that um, I'll put on my GitHub page. And I'll put the link to my GitHub down below. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so what we have here are 562 species of plants. And uh, each one of these plants was assigned a C value in an older database um, of the flora of the Chicago region. In a more recent, slightly different version of that database, um, some of the plants have are listed with slightly different names. So um, you can see this first one, I won't try and pronounce it has a different name in this database, but um, a botanist friend of mine went through and determined that these were the same. Similarly, some of their um, coefficients of conservatism, their C values, were different in the two databases for one reason or another. And um, in particular, I want to point out there are some places where we have NAs. We don't have NAs for the scientific name, that is the thing in the older database, but we do sometimes have NAs for the ones in the newer database. And so what I'd like to do is to get a new column that's going to give me my best guess about the plant's name and my best guess as to the plant's C value using a pretty simple rule. If I have a name and a C value from 2017, I'm gonna use that. If I don't, for instance, right here with this plant, um, Antonaria Howelli, <laughs> I shouldn't have tried to pronounce that, um, in that case, I'm going to use this scientific name. So use the 2017 values if I've got them and the older values if I don't. So how about, uh, let's call this plants new, mew. The cat version is plants mew. And I wanna take plant updates and I'll pipe it into a mutate command. Now I already loaded up tidyverse here at the beginning so I've got access to mutate. That's also what allowed me to use read underscore CSV here, so. Okay, so in the plant updates, I wanna have two new columns. The first one I want is, uh, how about name underscore best? I like to put name, I wanna put name first because that's the thing that it really is. It's a name and then the best is a modifier. Okay, I'm gonna use if else. And so I need a logical here, something that's gonna be true or false. So basically if it's not, if um, this name is not an NA, I wanna use this name. So is not is dot NA for, what was that? Uh, name 2017. 
All right, and then I have to say what I want it to be if in fact this is true. So if it's not an NA, I want name 2017. And then if this evaluates to false, oops, what did I do there? There we go. Uh, so the there is an NA for the 2017 name, then I wanna use scientific name. Great. I also want to have the C best. I'm gonna make sure I get my parentheses right, so there yeah c best and that should go exactly the same way if else it's not an na uh what was the thing i wanted was it c 2017 yep okay then i want to use c 2017 if that's actually there otherwise i will just use c and then we cross our fingers and <laughs> take a look at this. Let's take a view on this. Okay, so I did get my two columns, name best and C best. And let's find that NA right there for name 2017. There it is. All right, I think the last thing I'm gonna do, I wanna show you one last thing, um, just sort of checking on my NA values. I'm gonna use the skim function from the skimmer package. This is kind of a nice uh, way to get an overview on your data set. And I wanna do that for plants new. It's probably not gonna print out exactly like I want it, so let me resize my window. Tiny bit more. As usual, I'll post my code to GitHub so you can see that there as well. Okay, so that's somewhat readable. Okay, so Skimmer gives you some basic information on the data set, number of rows, columns, what type of columns you have, etc. Right now I want to point out the N missing. So for instance, I can see that I have um, 27 missing values for name 2017, no missing values for name best. That's what I was hoping for. Similarly, I have 20 missing values for C2017, but no missing values for C best, just like I would hope for. 